afternoon and welcome to our weekly climate dispatch. Johanna Miller of the Vermont Natural Resources Council and today uh, Lauren Hurl, Vermont Conservation Voters and I are joined by Senator Andy Perchlick, Andrew Perchlick, Senator from Washington County, my very own Senator um, who is a leading expert on energy and environmental issues and uh, we wanted to give you an update. We've been talking about um, the core climate priorities um, over the course of the last many weeks and Again, we're going to talk to you about one of our priorities, the Affordable Heat Act, um, this week, give you an update. It's looking like there may be a vote um, as early as tomorrow um, out of Senate Natural Resources and Energy. Um, we know we've been talking to you and working very hard to deliver a policy that is has integrity when it comes to the climate and also balances making sure that as we help the fossil fuel sector and Vermonters transition to cleaner, um, more affordable and uh, local heating resources that we do that really thoughtfully. And so balancing a variety of different goals is really critical. We think of the Affordable Heat Act can deliver and um, Senator Perchlick, who is the, the whip in the Senate and again, a leading expert in these issues um, professionally by day, I think we're, we've asked him here today to share his perspective about it, what it means in terms of a big priority for Senate leadership. We know it's a priority for House leadership. Um, what it, what do you think it can do and deliver for Vermonters, Senator? Yeah, we're great. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, I've been working on energy for 25 years in Vermont. My first job was working on fuel assistance and trying to help people with their heating costs in Vermont back when, after the oil embargo, people were still in this state of, you know, prices go up, what are we going to do about making heating more affordable in Vermont. And it seems like ever since then, that first job, every five years ago, fuel prices will spike, people will freak out, say we have to do something different. Um, we, we put money towards supporting the low income Vermonters to keep their houses warm so they don't have to choose between food and heat. But we have never really attacked the issue on a systematic basis. So the, the Affordable Heat Act is really a way to look at how do we build the markets for alternatives? How do we weatherize? How do we slowly build the markets for biodiesel and other things so that it's a viable alternative for the, the bulk of Vermonters? And we do so in a slow and controlled manner over time so that we do control costs and, and protect the vulnerable. You know, when I, my first term that I came into the Senate, the House had passed an increase in the fuel tax, and they really got beat up about it. And it, it didn't uh, ever come to the Senate floor, something that I supported. Uh, but it was an example of some people that are, are questioning the, the Affordable Heat Act are saying, like, why don't you just raise the tax? That's simpler. Well, we, we tried that, and we couldn't get, get that passed, and the, and the governor threatened to, to veto that. This is a more systematic way to really build the markets and keep the, the money that we spend on heating locally. I think of it as a climate issue for sure, but it's also an economic development issue and it's how to build the clean energy economy in Vermont. So I, I worked in heating assistance in Vermont. I founded the Renewable Energy Vermont, which was the trade association. So we worked on electricity, but also worked with new businesses in the heating area. And there's a huge potential for Vermont to keep more of that energy dollars here and grow a uh, renewable heating sector in the state even more than we have today. And then I also have worked in the state energy office on different energy issues over the last 12 years. So it's something that I spend a lot of time with both when I'm not in the building and when I'm in the building. And I'm really excited about this bill. And I think it's not only is it the kind of climate bill that the Senate leadership is, is working out that the Democratic caucus Everybody in the Democratic caucus has climate change as a top priority. This is really the, the, the bill that shows that that's true, that we can pass something. And it's going to take some time. You know, the bill passed this year, but we're going to wait a year to, to get the report and see how it's going to, you know, what the details are going to be as far as the impact and how, what that ramp up is going to be and things like that. And I think we owe it to Vermonters to, to take this first step and, and get the bill passed. So. Really glad to have the NRC support and other group support. But we we need uh, people out there to also support us. Absolutely, um, yeah. So this this bill again, the Affordable Heat Act, a huge priority. Uh, the Environmental Common Agenda um, that was signed by 19 groups. It was our the very first thing listed. It's you know a core recommendation of the Climate Action Plan. And really, I think you know it's it's hard. It's hard to do big systemic change. 
uh, but it's a really meaningful policy and there's been so much progress um, looking at how are we making it more climate accountable. Um, so we're sure that it's going to be you know, looking at a suite of factors of the impacts to our environment and uh, to public health and so on, um, and also that it's going to be beneficial to low and moderate income Vermonters. So those have been core values that uh, groups like ours have been bringing, senators like uh, Senator Perchlick and many others are really focused on watchdogging this bill and as it rolls through the process. So again, right now, we really need people to take a moment to call your senators Send them an email, make a phone call, let them know you support climate action, you want them to move on the Affordable Heat Act. Uh, now is the time, it's moving, and people are hearing a lot from the fossil fuel industry and folks about how let's just keep with the status quo, uh, and we know that the status quo is not working. <laughs> so uh, take a moment to make those phone calls, send those emails. Um, we've got lots of information we can link to for you if you want to know more about the bill. Um, but again, uh, just thank you so much, Senator Perchlick, for joining us today and your leadership. And thank you all for making your voices heard. And we'll be back with you next week. Thanks.